a multi-million dollar business uh, out there to uh, so quote say you've rescued something and the 10 News investigation uncovers controversy and transparency issues at the Big Cat Reserve. Coming up on 10 News. It's a story about the Big Cat rescue that has people all fired up. The catch, it hasn't even aired yet, but it's about to. Find out why it's such a hot topic in just a few minutes. It is a high-profile nonprofit known for rescuing abused and abandoned tigers, lions, and other large cats. However, critics say that Big Cat Rescue built its reputation by doing some of the same things it criticizes others for doing. As Ted News investigator Mike Deason explains, while the organization says it is completely transparent, that does not appear to be the truth. And people love to help animals because, you know, animals is, is where our heartstrings are. According to Joe Schreibvogel, Big Cat Rescue in Tampa is great at tugging on people's heartstrings. The nonprofit, which is close to a $5 million organization, calls itself the world's largest accredited sanctuary for exotic wild cats. We provide a permanent home for over 100 rescued exotic cats. And animal lovers who hear about the sanctuary are impressed. Last year, it took in more than $1 million in grants and contributions to take care of the cats. Shribe Vogel, who owns his own zoo in Oklahoma and is involved in a lawsuit with Big Cat Rescue, has issues with the organization. The people all over the world, you know, uh, they, they put your trust in being a sanctuary. They put your trust in, in when you send hard-earned money to them to take care of the cats. Big Cat Rescue says the animals it takes in have been abandoned and neglected, and it's on a mission to save them. The only way to end the abuse, neglect, and abandonment is to end the trading and breeding of big cats. But Shribe Vogel says that breeding and trading of animals is exactly what Big Cat Rescue did. My biggest concern is just the, the misrepresentation uh, in the animal industry as far as a sanctuary uh, gives us all a bad name. According to records we obtained from the United States Department of Agriculture, Shribe Vogel is right. Up until 10 years ago, cat after cat at the sanctuary was either bought by or born at Big Cat Rescue. Why would someone buy cats or breed cats and say they're rescuing cats? Well, uh, it, it's a multi-million dollar business uh, out there to uh, so quote say you've rescued something and tug on heartstrings from people all over the world. So it made perfect sense to me that these animals needed to be bred. CEO Carol Baskin wouldn't talk to us on camera, but in her own video and at the park, she admits she started out doing just that and says it wasn't all bad. Serves them very well to have been. So many of the things that we're accused of is that we know from the inside out why those people are doing what they're doing. Baskin says she saw the light and hasn't bought or bred an animal in 10 years. And while Big Cat Rescue says it's transparent, it refuses to be evaluated by the Better Business Bureau's standard for charity accountability. You know, when you first go, you're, you're so excited, you know, to be so up close and personal with these magnificent, and they are magnificent animals, that you're really not paying attention to anything else that's going around. Deborah Sandlin worked as a volunteer at Big Cat Rescue and at first thought that CEO Carol Baskin was committed to rescuing abused cats. She was nothing more than a private owner that, that found a way to, to get the public to finance her collection. Big Cat has also had some run-ins with the USDA, which cited the facility in September of 2010 and again in March of 2011 for either having limbs or materials in the fenced area that would make it easy for an animal to climb and jump over the fence. Remember, it has 25,000 visitors a year. In addition, in March, the USDA said the fence wasn't constructed to protect the animals from unauthorized people getting to them. But critics who call Baskin a master marketer say she often exaggerates what the organization does, how she acquired the cats, and the condition they were in before they came here to the sanctuary. They also say she often is caught in her own lies. Listen to Baskin describe how a cat named Shere Khan was raised before it came to Big Cat Rescue. He was bottle raised in a loving and nurturing home. 
But on the website, she says the opposite, adding Sherkan Khan was very sick for a long time and suffered major problems. I think she believes what she says at this point. I think she does. But as this email shows, even Baskin realized it was hypocritical taking in a cat because a story plays well on TV, but decided it was worthwhile, saying, I realize the national exposure this could give us, and that's what enables us to do more rescues. And while Baskin says her critics are just jealous, it's clear the organization has gone through major growing pains and brings in huge donations from those who believe what Baskin says and don't believe her critics. Mike Deason, 10 News. Two footnotes. One of the biggest critics of Big Cat Rescue, Joe Scheibogel, was fined $25,000 several years ago. He admits he didn't know what he was doing when he started out. And Carol Baskin's millionaire first husband mysteriously disappeared several years ago, two months after filing a domestic violence injunction against her. And Mike says his children from a previous marriage and former secretary have been quoted in national publications, including People, as saying that they believe Carol fed him to a tiger.